Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition of News You Can Use. I'm the host of the program, Thera Martin Milling, and today on our program we're going to share with you part one of what is going to be a two-part broadcast where we really shine the spotlight on a discussion about our young ladies, our young girls here in the city of Philadelphia. Now who's going to be talking about it? Grown women. From our perspective, we want to share with you uh, some of the issues and we want to share with you some of the solutions. On our program today, we're going to have Dr. Donnie Patterson. Those of you who are a regular viewer of this program, you know her. We have Stacy Shields Esquire joining us in this conversation today. And then we also have Dr. Evelyn Ridgway. Stay along for this show. We'll be back in just a moment with our guest. Hello to all of our viewers, and now we're going to begin our special broadcast today where we really shine the spotlight on a discussion with mature professional women as we look at and share with you our perspective on young ladies in Philadelphia. At the end of this two-part show, we want to encourage young ladies to love yourselves more, respect yourselves more, and understand that there's a whole wonderful, bright future waiting for you. So let's get started. We'll uh, go around and share with each lady and have her share with us just a little short snippet of what you're about, where you're working, or what it is that you do. So Dr. Donnie, we thank you for being here. Stacy Shields, we thank you. And of course, Dr. Evelyn. Ridgeway, we thank you for being here. Start with you, Doctor. Um, Dr. Donnie Patterson, I am the Director of Medical Community Outreach for Einstein Hospital. Um, I see patients and I also go out in the community and talk about different health issues wherever I'm needed. And I went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, but I'm happy to be here in Philadelphia. All right, yes. Hi, I'm Stacy Shields. I'm with Moody and Shields. I'm a partner. I said my practice is family law, civil rights violation, and personal injury. I'm a born and raised in Philadelphia, Philadelphia Public Schools, went to Cheney University. And I'm happy to hear, be here tonight. Thank, Thank you for being with us. Hello, my name is Evelyn Ridgway, Dr. Evelyn Ridgway, and um, I'm a licensed psychologist here in Pennsylvania. And I'm here from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where I work for the Early Head Start program. Um, I received my degree at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst in, in psychology. And um, also, more recently, I am a graduate fellow um, with a wonderful agency that's called Zero to Three. And Zero to Three is an agency that really focuses on the development of young children. And so that's really my area of specialty. Fantastic. Wow, what a panel we have. And I'm Thera Martin Milling, again, the host for this show and uh, a professional broadcaster in the city of Philadelphia. 34 years in radio and now a few years in cable television here at LaSalle TV and we are glad to be sharing with you today. Uh, the other note, Marquette University graduate out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I'm going to start with you, Stacy. You did something this past summer as I was walking up and down North 22nd Street and I inherited three young men for the summer to mentor and to uh, be a supervisor mm -hmm. over them as they did some work in our community. And I had them stop in your uh, office law practice several times, but on this one lucky day, you and your partner, Adrian Moody Esquire, were in the reception area of your building, mm -hmm. and you, I brought these young men in, and you all started to talk to them like they were your nephews or your cousins or perhaps even your sons, and you got right with them. You learned more from those young men in 10 minutes than I had in three weeks that I had them working with me. You got right to the point. You were like, have you all ever been involved in the criminal system? Whoa, and from there, that conversation went. But I think there was something special about the way in which you had that conversation with the young men. So for young ladies, do you do that same thing when you meet young ladies and you might not know a whole lot about them? Absolutely, but I will say this, that with young ladies, you have to kind of go a little differently. Mm -hmm. With males, you can go direct, say, listen, you know, have you been in the system? When you say to a female, females, we, you know, we tend naturally to be hold back a little bit, mm -hmm. why, is she, why is she asking me, why is she interested in why is that question? But with young ladies, yes, because it's so important to pull them in. Mm -hmm. It's so important to find out, you know, why they're not respecting themselves or getting the respect. Well, teach them how to be a lady through you being a lady, because that term has suddenly been so taboo. 
You know, I don't even know if it's even used, you know, in this young generation mm -hmm. because when I speak to them, you know, it's about being a lady, acting like a lady, and, and getting the respect of being a lady. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't seem to happen. It just seems that I'm more, the young girls are more inclined to be happy if they have a thug, if they have someone who they can visit in jail. It's, it's just, you know, if I got just as many tattoos as him, and not realizing and how you start the race is how you're going to finish it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to start out that way, you're not going to have a good finish. Wow. Exactly, and that's something that I hope our viewers will think about even as we yet get through this program. Now, doctor, you're dealing with young people, children, babies, babies. toddlers, up to what age do you go? Well, in our program, we work with children from zero to three. Mm -hmm. um, we also work with pregnant moms. And a lot of the work that we do is with the parents as well, because obviously when you're working with children, you're really working with the parents. If you had to give us an estimate, would you say that you have um, more uh, children who are referred your way in a 12-month period perhaps that are there because of bullying and psychologically that's hurting them and it's um, um, showing up in their grades or in their behavior? Or would you f say maybe that more the young people that you have to treat and assist are there for other um, health-related or mental health-related issues? Well, in the program that I'm working in, um, the, the children are, it's, it's a self-referred program. Mm -hmm. So if people come to that program because they want to learn more about child development for their children, they really want to do well in terms of raising their children. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the families that we do work with, though, um, the parents, um, mostly the moms, but moms and dads, sometimes grandparents um, or other caretakers, they've been through a lot themselves in their lives and they've experienced a lot of trauma themselves and they really want to do a good job with their children and really you know do things differently and so um, so one of the things that we really do is work with them around how can you you know raise your child in a way that, that may be different from how you ra you were raised yes. or the experiences that you had and maybe there's some great things about your experiences that you want to replicate um, but what can you do to really get your child off to a good start um, so, so that's really kind of what we do. Okay, we while do. we were setting up to get ready to do this show, one of the things that I use as an example is sometimes it might be early in the morning, I'm coming out to go to work, and I'll see a young mother across the street from me, and she's yes. dragging along her little boy or little girl, mm. and you can tell the mom is full of attitude. She's yeah. probably in a hurry. Yeah. It appears that she's trying to get to work, or she's got to get this baby somewhere first, and she's yanking him along, and sometimes cussing and calling mm. them every name under the sun. Right. That hurts me yes. as a parent, as a mother, as a Christian woman. I don't like to see that. Yes. So what, what do you do with a child who gets that treatment early in the morning before they can even start their day? Well, you know, it's really important to, to also to work with the parents because, again, the parents are the ones who the child is with most of the time. So it's really important to help parents to kind of understand how the way they interact with their child impacts upon their child. And there are really three areas that I think are really important. Um, one is to teach the parent about nurturance. The second is about responsiveness. And the third is about protection. Those are three things that if we can really do those things really well with our children, mm -hmm. that they will be off to a good start. Mm -hmm. It's really important to help parents to understand what those three things mean and how they can impart that to very young children. I mean, children from, from birth, even during pregnancy. Yes. It's really important yes. to be connected to your child. Dr. Ridgway, I know I've seen you at work um, many times and you deal with a lot of teen moms mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. often have low self-esteem as well. How do you deal with babies themselves raising babies? Mm -hmm. Do you deal with them a little bit differently? Uh, well, you know, teen moms may come with a little bit of a different um, perspective vibe. and a different vibe, right, than, than mothers that are, you know, more mature. We work with moms every age from um, the age of, you know, young teens even occasionally will have like maybe a 14 year old um, or so who, a, a parent that we might work with, um, to parents who are in their 40s, you know, and, and again to grandparents. Um, you know, sometimes teens, may, you may have to kind of approach them a little bit differently, um, like you were saying, you know, that you may have to uh, really work with them in a little bit of a different way than, than you would approach um, an adult because sometimes teens can be a little bit more defensive like they, they may not want to engage you in the same kind of way I think sometimes as a psychologist teens don't you know they're kind of concerned that you may be passing judgment on them one of the things that's really important to me is to really just be really down to earth mm -hmm. really to be myself you know at work everybody calls me Evelyn mm -hmm. because sometimes I find that the title doctor can be off-putting yes, um, yes. especially as a psychologist okay. you know 
who wants to see a psychologist? But you know, we're not that bad. Right, right, right. <laughs> Which brings me, I'm coming back to you now, um, Stacy Shields Esquire, again, a partner at um, Moody Shields Group, a law firm in North Philadelphia. Um, the whole scenario around um, children inherit their parents' behavior. Mm -hmm. if, if you could do a, a, a loose sort of a scenario around some of the law cases that you've dealt with over your professional career, are you finding that some of the clientele that you're dealing with who are younger, who are, you know, mm -hmm. 21 and under, right. are following the footsteps of dad, dad's already in jail, or mom well, was in jail? Well, let me just focus on, on, just talk about the young women. When you have a young woman who sees, who sees her mother as mm -hmm. her friend, and sees her grandmother, the third gen, as her friend, it's, it's, it's just, it's not going to have a good outcome, mm. right? When you see them all have the same nail design and the same tattoo together. Same and the same weave. And the same, same, same clothes, right? And it's in the same weaves. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you know that there's not, they're, they're friends. They're not, there's not the respect issue. It's mm -hmm. not like the mother can't tell them to do something because it's like, look, you're my friend. Mm -hmm. We were at the club together. You know, I, it's, it's like there are baby showers. The baby showers used to be for girls, they were just there. Mm -hmm. Now it's the boys there. It's mm -hmm. become a collateral thing. You know, there's no, there's not. What I see is that women have lost, right, being mentors to girls, letting them see where they should be, how they should become. It's just not there, right? You know, there. If they identify with Mama as my friend, my club friend, and Grandma's my club friend, then Stacy really doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. you know, right? Because this is what I see all the time, yeah. and this is what I identify with, and I don't have any aspirations to go and be something different than what I already know in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that is such a bad, you know, it's just a bad combination that we need a solution for that. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I tell your daughter who loves her mama and her grandmama that, hey, sweetheart, right, you don't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. You can be different mm -hmm. without me disrespecting your mama mm -hmm. and your grandmother. Right. You were saying well, um, along the same generational uh, situation, a lot of times in my profession, and I'm sure in your profession as well, we see things happening over and over yes. and over. The same thing is repeated. And we have to, first of all, get women to recognize that these things are, have negative consequences are happening over and over and over. And then once they recognize it, there is a way to break those generational um, situations, those in, in our church, we call them generational curses, mm -hmm. but there is a way to break those kind of cycles. And, mm -hmm. and once you can break the cycle, you can get girls to recognize, you know what, I can have some things that are different um, mm -hmm. than when I grew up. And they can take the positive things from the women mm -hmm. in their lives, um, but then take away the negatives. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Well, I also think as professional women that we should really be trying our best to grab one of one of these young ladies out there and pull them in. Yeah. Yeah. Just exactly. I don't care. Just it's just like a teacher. A teacher is teaching in a class. She knows she can't make everybody a leader, mm -hmm. but if she gets one good leader out of there, she's good. And for me, when I look at young girls, I'm like, I'm gonna just pick this one mm -hmm. and see if I can pull her in and break their generational curse. Just one. I have one right now, mm -hmm. thanks to the program. Um, you know, the theorists okay. familiar, familiar with there, and I had her this summer, and she's still with me. And, and I'm still working with her. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, like, it's like one brick at a time. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to save this girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to show her that just because you are where you are and just because you identify with what you identify with, you don't have to be there. Yes, right. yes, yes. And I want to say to our viewing audience that um, success or being positive doesn't mean that you have to forget from whence you've come. Mm -hmm. You don't have to uh, put the old neighborhood behind you. You don't have to leave all of your loved ones and friends behind. And, and we hope that that message is going to go strong as we get through this special edition of our program today. Talking about from a grown woman's perspective, some of what we see that's going on with our young ladies in particular. And we want to offer up some solutions in this uh, half an hour show on what we can do to make impact. And then we're going to come back with a part two on our next show, same panel of women, 
to delve into some of the other issues of our young sisters that we see on the street that we perhaps don't touch on in this first program today. So we're going to continue for the next few moments until we get the signal. It's time to take a break. Uh, our guests with us sitting up on this panel, Dr. Donnie Patterson right here from Einstein Medical Center, Stacy Shields Esquire, a partner at Moody Shields Law Group in North Philadelphia, also with offices in Center City, Philadelphia, and Dr. Evelyn Ridgeway, who is from uh, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So we are Continuing our conversation, I talked about the fact that uh, one day I was out doing some shopping. Uh, it was uh, right around family reunion time, and two young girls, I said, they, they were both little, tiny little petite girls, like 90 pounds dripping wet, each one, and they were having a cat fight in the street. This was over in the Omni section, not far from here, Fifth and Omni. And I have nothing to do with this. I mean, I'm in a hurry. It's family reunion time. I put those bags down. And I went over to these two girls, not even thinking about what if something goes sour, they could both beat me. <laughs> but I, you know, put my hands up on either chest to hold them back from each other. And I'm fussing all the, along about stop, 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 girls, young ladies, young ladies, ladies, you know. And um, afterwards, at, once I had split the fight up and they went in separate directions and I was praying that they were going to stay in separate directions, I had to leave. But I began to shake even in my car. My God, what did I just do? I jumped into the middle of a fight. What if one of those girls who had a knife? Anything could have happened. But sometimes you just have to act, particularly when we see our young girls, our young children acting inappropriately, totally inappropriately. It's hard because nowadays sometimes people will lash back at you mm -hmm. and they'll ask you why you're involved. Yes. But I think as, as in my particular case, I would just pray about it. I do that in medical situations too. I pray about it and I say, okay, is this my time to mm -hmm. intervene? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm glad that you were safe. But a lot of times, I mean, that's a perfect example of what Stacy was saying, you know, we have to get involved. And it, and it doesn't take much. We don't necessarily have to invite people to live with us in your house if, if, that's, if you can't do that. But you can reach out to someone and get involved and encourage them and um, you know remind them that they're po they're positive and they're beautiful and and that they're loved and that they're important mm -hmm. um, so often I mean suicide is so high in our mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. and it's because people feel so so down on mm -hmm. themselves and we forget sometimes that self-esteem is not necessarily how other people view these women it's how they view themselves so we mm -hmm. have to continue to boost them up and to teach them that there is a future. I, for some reason, young people yes. don't see that there's a future. Yes. It's right. like, right. you know, we think about retirement. Mm -hmm. They they think about tomorrow. Yes. Right? Right. Yes. You know, they, you know. I'm like, there's a future. Do you know what? There's so much ahead of you. Enjoy. Have your fun now, because each of us here can certainly talk about what we've done mm -hmm. and how much fun we've had. You know, when we were at, you know, young like them, we had a ball. And but we had yes, a ball. And but since we did. But but we also, as we had a ball, we knew there was still a future. Yes. We knew after this ball, yes. there was a bigger ball. A bigger okay. ball. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. Right now, we have to go to break, and we will return. So stay along with us for this special edition of News You Can Use. University's communication department. Students learn to think and do. Every semester, communication students create and implement public relations plans for local nonprofit organizations. And journalism students produce Germantown Beat, an online news source for the local community. It's great that we can apply what we learn in the classroom in our community. Philadelphia is a nation's fourth largest media market and has four major sports teams. Being in a major media market allows us to gain great professional experience through internships and co-ops. The Communication Center is home to the university's cable station. LaSalle TV reaches over 350,000 homes in Philadelphia and airs mostly student-produced programming. Our communication department is ranked in the top 10 in North America for relational communication research. But keeping with the tradition of the De La Salle Christian Brothers, teaching students comes first. Think, do, with LaSalle Communication. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter.
Hello, everyone. We return with a special edition of News You Can Use. I'm your host, Thera Martin Milling. If you just turned your set on, well, you missed a little bit of the show, but that's all right. We've got 10 minutes to tell you some more about our um, look at uh, young ladies here in Philadelphia, young ladies, young girls, and some of the issues that are of concern to us as grown women who respect and love ourselves and us wanting to say to young ladies and to young girls, love yourself, respect yourself, and the world can be at your feet in terms of education and opportunity. So we're going to make the best of this time we have in this second portion of the program. And guess what? There's a part two on this discussion. So you got to keep your dial locked at Channel 56 LaSalle TV and also Verizon Fios Channel 36. Dr. Donnie, while we were in break, we were just starting to talk, uh, touch on suicide a little bit. And uh, Dr. Evelyn, Stacy as well, young girls, teenage girls, suicide, that's yeah, happening? It is. So about 30%, 30 to 35% of middle schoolers have said they thought about suicide. Oh, come on. And so we don't really think about, think about our middle schoolers, middle our, school? our 12 and 13 year olds thinking about suicide, okay. but it has a lot to do with body image at that age. So they're not necessarily thinking about suicide um, because things are so hard in school, mm -hmm. but they're thinking about it because of body image and how other people are treating them. So the fact that they're even thinking about it means that we can, need to continue to talk to our teens. So when you say body image, um, it could be something as simple as a face full of pimples, which many young people may go through sure. um, because it's just something that teens sure. go through or preteens sure. go through. Sure. It might be something with weight. Um, it might be complexion. Sure. I used to always be called darky, 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 and mm -hmm. that bothered the heck out mm -hmm. of me when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. I didn't begin to love myself mm -hmm. and the skin I'm in till I was 21. I, I want to make sure that we emphasize here today that everyone is different. Mm -hmm. Every single person, um, and I'm sure we all can attest that there are things about us that we don't like. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Every single person, whether it's bow legs or a gap in the teeth mm -hmm. or frizzy hair, whatever it is, we all have things we don't like. And we have to tell our, our girls that everyone's an individual. You have to love yourself and that we can't let the the ideals of the world be the beauty image that they have in their head because mm -hmm. the world is very different. Um, we have to be careful about the magazines that we have at home because um, some studies have shown that when, when girls are looking through these magazines that they can get depressed just from mm -hmm. looking at the magazines. We have to tell our, our daughters, these are airbrushed pictures. Mm -hmm. right. These are not real <laughs> pictures. And even if it is, everyone does not look like that. Mm -hmm. You look around you, most people, you know, are just regular, normal. They don't look like those mm -hmm. um, pictures in the magazines. Right. And we have to encourage our teens to know to love themselves. Maybe we need to, you know, make up a mantra mm -hmm. so that every day when they're in the mirror brushing their teeth, they say, I love you. You know, you are awesome. You are beautiful. Because everyone is different and we cannot hold ourselves by the standards mm -hmm. of others. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. you know what the other thing is that I always say this to young people. I say, if, if God wanted us to all be alike, he would have made us all alike. Right. Right. And I'm like, you can't be everything to everybody. Right. I say, every boy isn't going to like you, right? And there's going to be some that do. You know, every, every person isn't going to like. I said, but if you love yourself and you're into yourself first, everything mm -hmm. else comes, comes with it. I love that. And the thing is that I say, look, find out what's, what, what do you, instead of focusing on what you don't like, yes. tell me what you do like right. about you. And that. let's just play that up, mm -hmm. you know, because we all, own, we all know how to play up that asset. We learn it, but they need to learn it now. And I said, but I will say something about when you were mentioning about the body image, and, and I have seen the other extremes where there are those who may need a little health tune-up, mm -hmm. right, weight-wise. Sure, sure. And I'm not saying, you know, because, you know, as my husband would say, only dogs like bones and they bury them. So, you know, there has to be, you know, yeah. we don't use the word F-A-T, we say chunky nutters. Mm -hmm. so, but some of the chunky nutters, right, is not healthy. Right. And I'm sure in all your right, practice, so, uh, you know, and I'm like, all right, I understand you love yourself. I know you feel good about mm -hmm. yourself, but there's a health issue that's coming with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you're going to be, you don't have to be an age. You can be a healthy 14, sure. mm -hmm. but I'm concerned, which I'm sure the both of you see, with sure. the diabetes right. and everything mm -hmm. that's running, especially in our community and in our office in North Philly, I see more pharmaceutical reps selling diabetic medicine mm -hmm. that I really right. sometimes think I need to give up my practice mm -hmm. and start selling this medicine mm -hmm. right. so I can make more money. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We don't focus, we don't focus on, um, you know, how can we really make ourselves well? Mm -hmm. We focus on how can we cover it up, yes. you know? Yes. So sometimes, you know, we're not really focusing on what, what's a good diet and how can I really make myself 
feel better and be be more healthy um, inside and, and in terms of my mental health as well. Right. And you know, one of the things that I think is really important is we you know we're talking about this issue of suicide, is that one thing that I've seen very often is that um, when young people talk about suicide, um, a lot of times they aren't really believed that that's what they're that that's how they might be feeling. And people will say, um, you know, they're just trying to, to get attention. And you know, the thing that I always really emphasize though is if that's where they're going to get attention, then they need attention. Because if you don't give mm. them attention for that, then what's the next step that they sure. need to do sure. to get attention? And that might be to slip my wrist or to take a bunch of pills or to do something like that. And so we really need to pay attention when children are, children, adults, anybody, are saying that they want to harm themselves or they right. want to kill themselves. They, they really are feeling pain inside and we need to acknowledge that because that's sure. part of what that pain is, is that they feel like nobody understands right. what they're going through. Sometimes nope. it's really hard to know the difference between depression and just moodiness of a normal <laughs> yeah. teenager. That's true. Mm -hmm. and so it that's really true. is hard. Yeah. Yes. And so you just want to really pay attention to your teen, open up dialogue, you know, pay attention if they feel withdrawn, if, they, if they're withdrawn from things they used to like to do, if they're constantly sad or having crying spells, if they're doing the extreme, sleeping too much or sleeping yeah. too little, mm -hmm. eating too much or eating too little because we use food as a crutch right. sometimes Absolutely. Um, and and if people are talking about um, being sad or talking about uh, suicide those things we really have to pay attention to and uh, you can't just chalk it off as oh it's just normal teenage I, I want would, us to really you, open the dialogue with our teens mm -hmm. now, I think that is parents will just play it off because you're so used to a child saying I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do mm -hmm. that right. and that's where I think has to do with a lot of stuff with us as women and mentoring sure. these girls who even though they have the parent or aunt that if you know oh my mother's not listening well let me call Stacy you know mm -hmm. Stacy will hear it differently mm -hmm. than your mom will hear it who's saying girl you better just be quiet and I'm right. tired of hearing this you know I'm tired I'm right. working all day how many times you want to kill yourself right, right. no right. but, but right. Stacy right. is going to listen a little differently say well okay what's going on right. you know do you want to meet you want to go sure. yeah and yeah. I don't think these young girls I don't think they have, and I think that some may not. We have to show them how to use us, mm -hmm. right. how, and we have to show ourselves how to be available sure. to them. Mm -hmm. Sure. And Absolutely. if they can't find, you know, if they don't have an Aunt Stacy, you know, yeah. Yeah. To, to, you know, young girls should go to teachers who they trust, right. a mm -hmm. guidance counselor who they trust. Their primary care doctor. Their primary <laughs> doctor who they trust. <laughs> um, to, to somebody tell, somebody hears what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes a parent, they, they, don't, they don't understand. I think for, it's scary for parents. When your child says to you, I want to kill myself, oh my gosh, that's the last thing that you want to yeah. really right. believe. Actually believe. You don't yeah, want to because believe you don't, you know, I don't mm -hmm. want my child, that's, it's scary. What am I going to do? How am I going to mm -hmm. help my child? So you mm -hmm. just kind of, the parent goes into denial mm -hmm. and kind of um, brushes it aside. It doesn't mean that the parent doesn't love the child. And I think sometimes that's the message that the child mm -hmm. hears is, oh, my parent must not care. A couple of things. Um, the school shootings that, that we witnessed. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there haven't been any teenage girls who've done anything that horrific in the history of the United States that I am aware of. But that issue is happening. When we come back from break, I want to touch on that just a little bit and the psychology behind that and hopefully that no young girls are plotting or planning to do anything like that across the country. But then also I think back to just last night in doing my prison class at uh, one of the local uh, prisons here in Philadelphia, a uh, young girl, uh, 21 years old, and she was telling me about how her man, her boyfriend is really why she committed a robbery because they did it together, but he talked her into it. So I want you, when we come back from break, Stacy, to talk to these young ladies who are dating some of these knuckleheads out here. Mm -hmm. Try to con Make them understand mm -hmm. that you don't want to get really tangled oh. in the legal system. No. So, news you can use. It'll continue in a moment as we continue this special edition of our program, focusing on our young girls. <laughs> 